everyone, welcome to another episode of Table Talk. I'm your host, Jake Combs, and today we're taking a look at Really Loud Librarians, uh, provided courtesy of our friends at Exploding Kittens. And this video, as always, is sponsored by our friends over at GamesU, and we appreciate them for all of their support. Now, with Really Loud Librarians, everybody's divided into two teams. And uh, so we have Team Gertrude, which this is Gertrude right here. And then uh, Team Wilfred. And so basically the way you play is after that's turned over, you're going to draw a card. And uh, everyone's going to decide ahead of time what number they're going to be doing. So You know, so like for example, if we decided on number four, things you shouldn't touch, we would guess uh, we'd have to basically shout out things that start with H to move her forward to H, and then we'd repeat with each of the letters, and so basically, what that means is. Um, So you're actually not necessarily doing just H though. So you have H, R, or E. So as long as you say something that you shouldn't touch that would fit one of those, um, then you would mm, she would slide forward. So like say for instance, if we mm, say something that starts with letter E, she would move forward to the E. Now for we have L, S, K, and so we have to do you know one of those. So things that you mm, you shouldn't touch that starts with L, S, or K, um, you know S could be serpent. So serpent, you know, if they agree that that's a valid word, you'd move her to S. And so you just keep going. The whole goal is to get your character around as many times as you can. So that way you actually move your, your counter up and uh, be crowned the winner. And so after the timer runs out, then you switch and Wolford goes around and does the same thing. And then wh whichever team goes the furthest, wins the round and um, so this game itself reminds me a lot of um, from one to t-rex in that the entire game you're spent um, basically being as loud as possible just throwing words out um, you know, pretty much non-stop and so you know if, if you are playing with a group that has some sensory issues um, like uh, you know, some children do, or um, even some adults do, and you know, having everybody yelling out words, and basically just having to be nonstop until the timer ends, that that can be a little overwhelming for some of those players, and um, definitely make it a little bit more difficult for them to enjoy. Um, but uh, I, I think a lot of the charm that comes from this game is more specifically in how uh, the really seeing like what words or what word combinations that you can use as examples that you can get away with. Um, you know, so like things you shouldn't touch, you know, reptile. Um, you know, for some people, that's not a thing that you shouldn't touch because they have pet reptiles. Um, and so you know they would disagree with that and uh, where other people are you know terrified of snakes and and other reptiles and so you know they would totally agree with that so you know kind of kind of seeing you know who would deem it a valid word or not um it definitely plays into the into some of the enjoyment of the game but um you know again if you are playing with somebody with sensory issues um you know this might be a game that you'll want to uh, avoid um just because of the sheer you know, overload of noise, depending on how many people you actually have playing, um, it can be a little overwhelming. But um, definitely a creative game. Uh, you know, we we had fun playing it, and uh, but it's just due to the noise volume and some of the players that we had with us. I don't think it's one that's going to see regular rotation.